What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again, and this time we return with Jacob Bannon of Converge. Great to be able to talk with you today. Thanks uh, f for coming back. Right on. Well, thank you for having me back. Yeah, it's so great to have you here. We got thank you for giving us some new Converge. Uh, we got Blood Moon Part One. Being that this was a collaboration with Chelsea Wolf, was this more than just you know picking up where you left off after the dusk in us? This was almost kind of like a new era for Converge or a new side of Converge that we haven't seen before. Well, you know, we we actually started this process before that record. So, um, so Blood Moon was essentially. It was in an idea form basically since, I don't know, for years and years and years. Um, but the actual execution of it uh, with Chelsea and Ben C and Steve brought into the to the mix uh, actually happened in 2016 um, in Europe where we, um, we they had this idea of doing this, put it together. Actually, it started in 2015, played it in 2016. Um, and we basically reimagined a variety of converged songs that, um, that we collectively felt could have sort of alternate arrangements and sort of be, uh, be brought to a different level than just being a typical four piece, you know, like abrasive, aggressive, you know, punk, hardcore metal song or whatever. So, we did that, and we did that with um, with Chelsea and and Ben C and Steve in a live setting at I think it was three or four shows in Europe, and it went really well, and we really enjoyed it. Um, once we finished those shows, we basically started working on this material uh, casually for for quite a while, you know, for basically what five years. Um, where everybody was sort of throwing demo ideas uh, at one another, and you know, we were really excited about it. But it was more, it was a logistical thing of you know just how how we could all be in the same place at the same time, have schedules that could align. There's already a lot of moving parts within what we call like the converged universe, and just like you know all of our affiliated bands and projects and things. So it just, you know, added another level of complexity to that. Mm -hmm. So it took a while for that to come together. And then you had COVID happen as we were doing all this, right? So we were supposed to be in the studio, basically the spring of 2020, uh, finishing this material, or at least what would be Blood Moon 1. Uh, that got derailed. Um, and so we all sort of started working. Well, first we were kind of in a holding pattern for a while. We weren't really sure what to do. Uh, and then we started kind of chopping at it um, remotely. So uh, we would basically finish tracks, uh, you know, work on these, these demoed ideas that we've had for a long time, pass them on to Kurt as the engineer and producer and, and had him start shaping things you know moving things around and we just kept that process going for quite a while and then we um we ended up coming all together in the summer and uh finished some basic tracking that wasn't done and everybody was present for mixing um of the album and, and whatnot at that time we were able to finally all get together so it, it took a long time to come together um and it, you know, is a continuation of our band, but it's sort of like an extension. It's another, it's another branch of our band. You know, we've been doing uh, this sort of, you know, the four, the four piece, you know, aggressive punk rock hardcore version of our band forever. And we've always wanted to grow and do more things under the Converge umbrella. And you know, in in our minds, there are no rules. You know, we're we're artists and creative folks, and just wanted to, you know, do something different and um no we did it and and very it really is always fascinating when a band because uh, when I heard about this collaboration with Chelsea, well, the first uh, comparison I had was maybe what Cult of Luna did with Julie Christmas in a way to kind of have that because I've never seen sides of Cult of Luna like that before, and I, I think it's extraordinary that like you know you're this long into your career and we're still discovering new sides of Converge that we haven't heard before, and like every time I like go to like a Converge show or you know you Converge has come up with numerous discussions before. Some people say Jane Doe is their favorite album. Some say All We Love We Leave Behind is their favorite album. So it, it's really uh, impressive that you're able to take a new approach. Being that this is titled Blood Blood Moon Part 1, and I'm probably 
asking this a little too far uh, in advance, but like, uh, do, is this almost kind of be like a whole series where people should, like a concept series where people should listen to Blood Moon 1 and then go to Blood Moon 2? Is it almost going to be like a converged Lord of the Rings in a way? Well, it was an interesting sort of uh, design, almost like informational design um, challenge how to do this, right? So can people know Converge is Converge, right? We're just a four piece, we're a lot of four piece band. People either get us or we don't, or they don't. It is what it is. We don't really care. It's the way it's always been. Um, but we've always had dynamics within our songs. And I think more often than not, uh, especially casual listeners of our bands, usually think that we're just you know like all go all abrasive all the time all hyper aggressive and i would say we, we are to a degree like you know 80 percent that but there is a lot of depth to what we do as well you know like nothing has ever been an afterthought you know no, nothing's ever been a decoration you know we all bring the four of us have always brought something to the table creatively to enhance what everything is uh, so there's been dynamics there but i think that a lot of people I don't really think a lot. Of, I don't really think about people that much, but I would think that the the general audience typically thinks of us that way. So presenting this side of us, um, or at least like this portion of what we do in a more sort of cohesive way, not just um, not not just sort of like nest, nested into a, a typical converge record, um, could be jarring for some people and. It might really, I mean, it might connect with some people too. I and mean, we don't really know, but like, it's interesting. Like it's because as, as much as it's like, it's a different side of us, it's still like hyper aggressive. It's super heavy. I think there's some of the heaviest dense, most dense moments we've ever had as a band or on this record, you know, that are just like claustrophobic in terms of how dense they are musically, you know? Um, and then there's like, there's a lot of just like, like heavy hard riffing on this record too um but it has like a different route it almost has like a more of a um, almost like a post-rock sort of a, a doom post-rock kind of vibe than it does a um you know typically what what we would be known for and that's and that that comes from the the collaborators you know it comes from like all of us working together and all having different kind of musical voices and creative ideas you know so for us Blood Moon is an extension of what we are and um, or Converge Blood Moon, how you want to define it. And that that was the information design challenge. How do we present this to people? Um, you know, it's not just a um, it's not just, you know, a record with guests and the next record will be a record with guests or something like that. Yeah. This is another this is a seven piece version of our band. You can um, I, I've used this parallel before uh, here and there um, talking about it. Or like I liken it to like Melvin's big band or something, mm -hmm. where like they just they have no rules, they just do what they want. You know, sometimes they have you know they have members that they don't have on other records. Sometimes they, you know, do a record with drummer A or B. Um, you know, it's like it's we're kind of like looking at it like that. Um, and there's definitely, especially now, there's definitely parallels to you know other incredible artists who are doing collaborative records and things. Um, you know, I could think of, um, yeah, like you mentioned, like Cult of Luna, an incredible band, that record they did with Julie Christmas is awesome. Magnus from Cult of Luna worked on this record. He actually, he mastered this record. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, they're, no, they're, they're a brilliant band that never gets the recognition that they deserve. They still haven't, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but like, it's, yeah, it's not like a new thing, but it's like a new thing for us, you know, to do, um, which was it was just a really exciting it was kind of liberating for us you know because you get stuck in your formulaic things that you always do you know and writing the way you write interacting with one another how you typically interact and working with a whole new group of folks in a different way in a way where we were really open to their ideas and you know it wasn't like they were coming playing the parts that we were writing for them they were they were coming and saying here's a here's a skeleton of a song what do you think yeah. you know here's here's um you know chelsea would write lyrics i would write lyrics i would edit lyrics steve would write lyrics i would edit their lyrics they would edit my lyrics we would write for each other uh we would have ideas in in, in, in one another's heads of of like you know who should sing what and how they should do it and we were just like yeah cool let's try it 
you know, we wanted to, to be that free um, as opposed to just fall into our, our typical, you know, uh, defined roles. Well, uh, and that's that's really special for us. Well, as a Converge fan, like I've never like when you compare Halo and a Haystack to now, I think that like I don't consider a record to be a continuation of another record. I just think it's a continuation of the evolution of Converge. And yeah, for sure. Think of it as an as an author writing books, right? Like, you know, like Stephen King isn't writing Cujo part one, two, three, four, five, you know, um, you just you have another creative sort of chapter that you that you undertake as a as a as a band or as a you know one individual um and it's just you know it just is what it is um so for us this was the beginning of converge blood moon in the sense of having a having a true studio album mm -hmm. uh, you know people that were in europe are familiar with what we did there um at those live shows and this was just sort of like a true you know, like a just like a true progression of what what we that was essentially the, the flashpoint for it. And I should I should say too that um, a lot of people in in Europe that saw us know this, but here they people don't. You know, the idea for Blood Moon is that we're we're all multi instrumentalists, so we all can play something, right? So we're like, no, like I'm not. I I never wanted to be a vocalist. You know, it's like not my thing, but I, I do it because I fell into this role in my band. I started this band as the bass player, you know, like a million years ago. Nobody wanted to sing, so I became the singer. It is what it is. Uh, I had, we had a lot of bass players and a lot of guitarists available, so that's kind of what we did. Um, and so all of us can play something and or play everything to a degree. So in live, um, and I'm sure that this, you know, this more sort of like fleshed out version of our band will will do this as well. We we all switched instruments all the time. So like there were some songs where I played guitar, there were some songs I played bass, there were some songs I just sang. There were some songs that Chelsea played guitar, there were some songs that Chelsea just sang. Um, we were all this, like Nate would play guitar, then play acoustic, and then switched back to bass. Like there was a lot of that. So like the stage was a very active sort of uh place where there was a lot of uh, interchanging that was occurring why we why we do blood moon and and it will continue to be that as well as a visual i've always loved it when like the pro because when the process and materials that obviously could determine the composition whether it's in music or in visual art but it almost seems like the the process and materials also determined the concept it didn't just determine the composition it determined the concept and which finds yeah for it, sure it, it kept it loose yeah you know and uh loose and inspiring too because you're just kind of like wow if we do this live we can do it this way you know so we could have two bass players here we could have four guitars here we could do something crazy um yeah so it, it all kind of um yeah that 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 ability to be flexible allowed us to to explore different territory you know like i know as a four-piece band there's there's times where we're like oh well we wish we had you know, like four other musicians up here to be able to pull off this song that we can't play live because we just don't have enough musicians to do it. And in this situation, it's like we have, we have a plethora. And so we were able to write within within that mindset, which I think uh, was probably pretty liberating for all of us. Mm -hmm. For your creative process, whether it is visual art or writing lyrics or music, do you almost need to be in a certain place like in order for ideas to cultivate or does inspiration like strike when you least expect it well at least for this record there was there's only one song on this record that that i that i primarily wrote which is the the first single we released which is called blood moon and i wrote the skeleton of that song you know it became an entirely different thing when the when the, the rest of the the six you know jump in and you know add their incredible voices and input on it um but for a song like that um it just sort of popped in my head one day um there was a there was the piano melody is what what the, the piano, piano melody and the guitar drone popped into my head one day and i just quickly documented it and i didn't give it a home in terms of a band like i didn't shuffle it into a uh and like i didn't shuffle it into a specific you know, like folder and say, this is for, this is for Warrior Wounds or Umbra or Converge or whatever. I was like, this is, I was just like, this, this is 
substantive and I wanted to land somewhere. I don't know where to where it should land. And then after we did those shows and we were all saying like, hey, you know, we all want to write for this. Let's all like let's all contribute and do some cool things. And I remember that I had that song um, that I started and then I, I shared it with everybody pretty soon after we got back. I was like, well, here's, you know, here's a song that I think could be fitting for this sort of musical character of what we're trying to develop here. Because you have to remember, like, those shows sort of set the tone for what the music, the sort of collective character would be. You know, we weren't exactly sure, you know, when you go in. You don't know what your collective voice is. But when you have a little bit of creative time together like that, you all start to understand what you're building together. And so it felt like a, um, it felt like, like a raw some raw materials that would that would fit well into what we were trying to build and everyone's like yes and then we all get inspired by by each other's input you know if, if, if steve brought in a bunch of songs i would hear it and get excited about what he was working chelsea and ben the same kurt obviously the same um nate as well nate wrote a ton on this record too um yeah we all just tried to try to put in, in our, our best possible material and as the visual artist of the band, does your visual? Because one of when I interviewed you at the Wear Your Wounds show two years ago, uh, and I asked mm-hmm. if maybe like making art for your band it has a little more freedom as opposed to the artwork you've done for others. But you also mentioned that your band is a client in a way. So do you find uh, the visual mm-hmm. process of a Converge album to also be collaborative, or is that mainly coming from your uh, vision? Like, is it only your yeah. vision in a way? Mm-hmm. I think we all sort of trust each other's strengths, just like typical Converge does, um, as well core Converge or however you want to define it. Um, they usually leave leave me to do those things. I wanted to collaborate with folks a bunch. You know, I talked to a, a whole bunch of outside artists, you know, to, about this record and and just tried to see if I, I could would like link up with somebody that would feel good because sometimes to, sometimes there's like a, an immense amount of internal pressure where like you're already creating certain aspects of what you do uh, you might not want to do it all you know um and this record i went back and forth with that especially when when covid hit just because there was so there was like there was it was, it was such a sort of oppressive time where like there i had I didn't have any time to make stuff like all the all the records and, and things that came out during that time like the, I did a like a, pro, a project with Shane from Napalm Death and, and Dirk from Megadeth and stuff and it's called Blood from the Soul and I, I started that basically before COVID you know that was a that was a, a long process but we, we started that a couple of years before um, the Umbra record I started before COVID um, so like and then all of a sudden trying to create in that in that space where my day job did not allow me to have any free time to make anything like by the time I got got home you know I st- you know stopped the the 10 or 12 hour day or whatever like I was done like I didn't have any energy to do anything and so it was I went back and forth as to like if I should do it or if I should have somebody else do it but then I was like, yeah, I, I think, I think I want to, and you know, I just wanted to keep it quite simple. But I wanted to build a, like an inform, like an interesting information system where, like, um, you can't really see it in the CD packaging, but in the LP packaging, you can. Where uh, it's like a, you, you'll so eventually when it comes out, you'll 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 see it. But it's basically like a a big die cut moon, and, and so every record will have a outer cover and an inner cover and they interplay with one another. So there's like sort of, there's versions of imagery that appear on both the outer cover and inner cover and they kind of have like a little bit of interplay. And I wanted to be able to do that and kind of create a system of packaging where if we chose to do more Blood Moon records, we could continue doing it with the structure that we basically built. And so each record would have a different sort of color not theme because they always will have a sort of thematic color way right most records do in some way um but this some elements would basically carry over from record one two three four five to a million and that was kind of the intent and i knew that if i tried to hand that over to somebody else there some of the details that i wanted to be in there might not happen so i i was just like i'll just do it i kind of know what i want to do and 
for me, the color was the most important thing about this record, um, at least for the visuals. You know, I wanted it to be you know, you know, huge, like hugely saturated, really vibrant, um, and it kind of have this sort of shimmer that this like richness and shimmer that um, that hasn't been on our previous records. And I wanted that to sort of be a hallmark of of just us collaborating, you know, and just like all these voices, all this color, all this like really like a special depth, you know, and not just like, not just sort of like a mess of chaos, which is typically what my art ends up kind of being. Um, so yeah, so I did it. But I have to say, like, I also worked with, you know, other folks, you know, I, I had um, like a good, a, a good peer of, uh, of ours, Aaron Horky, who's worked with us a ton. I uh, do all the typography. He's my one of my favorite uh, type illustrators. Um, he did a wonderful job. I uh, gave him some basic direction of what, what I was looking for, and you know he, he crushed it. So all, all of that typography is all handmade. And um, yeah, then like for some like merchandising stuff, um, my friend Merrill, who's an incredible illustrator, offered to do a number of pieces. So he did a number of pieces based on songs. And it was really interesting to see like his interpretation of things. So like I like collaborating that way. I think it's really it's interesting to see other people's voices and or, or other takes on on a, on a creative visual or voice that I sort of started and see how they interpret that. It's really interesting to me. Well, because con as I've stated before, like Converge is like uh, an experience. It's not just a band to me. It's it's a experience whenever I've seen you live. Like whenever you play a song off Axe to Fall, I see I just see those profile portraits there. And I since all you love all we love we leave behind uh, came out, I can't look at a crescent moon the same again. And uh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah, so like, but when you're playing live, you know you're bringing album, you're bringing songs from different albums, and you know you're cultivating a set list together. So do you? Feel feel that maybe the context of the material that you write changes depending if you're playing a Halo on a Haystack song right before an Axe to Fall song or so on. Well, live is really interesting because live is basically a giant mixtape, right? And, that's, yeah. and like, there's some bands that go out there and say, we're never going to play old material ever again. <laughs> we're only playing the newest record or like, we're only playing like, or there's some bands that you go and see and they play only their hits and then they play like one or two new songs. You know, that's a very real thing that you see, especially with like legacy style, like rock bands. Um, for, for us, we have a healthy respect for our audience. And we know that, you know, our, there's songs that we like to play that's that are fun for us, or at least somehow um, fulfilling for us to play as a as a band and then there's songs that we know that the audience would like to hear because it connects with them as well and so it's like a careful sort of give and take there you know of like how what we want to do and basically we've just been trying to add as many songs as we can as a band you know like when we first started as a band you you would play like a half hour set you know like 40 minutes would feel like a marathon now we're used to doing in, in europe like you know 90 minutes or more you know there was a show in in connecticut a bunch of years ago that we just wanted to see how many songs we could actually play and we played a i think it was over i think it was like a two and a half hour set oh, or something like that it was punishing it was terrible i'm sure the audience hated it it was probably awful but for us it was it was kind of a like an endurance test to I, see if we could do it i think your diehards um, greatly appreciated it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was fun. I could see there's like a moment where you used to look at the audience and you're like, you're probably exhausted. We're probably exhausted too. But we pushed past that. Um, but as a um, as a band, yeah, it's like a it's a weird give and take. And you do go to that. Like, you kind of like get pulled back a little bit into songs sometimes. Um, but other times, the content of a song. Uh, doesn't necessarily change but like you know where your head's at as an artist is maybe different you know like you're not in the place where you were when you wrote a song in 2000 you know 2000 or, or 2005 you know like you're different you're not a different person but you've evolved and you've progressed so sometimes that subject matter changes and sometimes you're sort of like you're unconsciously sort of invoking new emotion and you're sort of attaching different kind of meanings to things as you play um just to keep they just i think that natu naturally happens you know um you might be dealing with other frustrations in your life or other turbulence and you kind of work through it in a more um almost like a more of a 
like an aerobic way you know you're just kind of there you know like at this large volume and you might not be like totally rooted in that subject anymore but you might be rooted in something else and that could be just as potent um but yeah so it's a it's an interesting thing putting together set lists thankfully with this we we have one album right now so that's you know they will when we do do you know blood moon live in some capacity we will be you know focusing primarily on that okay fair enough that's a that's a good balance yeah. and uh i had one more question for you um and yeah, I, sure. I, this is mainly uh pertaining to the visual art uh i forgot to ask this uh, last time but um as somebody who has worked for both your band and for uh your uh client uh for clients as well do you almost have a different attachment to doing work for somebody who's completely outside of Converge or Umbra or uh, or where your wounds in a way like is it almost like more of a professional setting in a way where like you know it's more about the client more so than about your own uh, personal experience incorporating or is it still invoking your own personal experiences into the art as well I guess it would depend on the day but it's, it's a little bit of both um, I would say client work you can often you're providing a service you know and sometimes i'm just providing a service for converge like i do a lot of design work you know every day that like you know it might be good design work i'm happy with it but it's not you know it's not like emotionally connecting with me you know it's it's information design it's sort of like just you know getting getting done what it needs to get done and getting it out there into the world um sometimes sometimes you get emotionally involved with a with a client and a project that can be dangerous though because you know there's a whole there's a whole process of of professional line in a way revising well yeah we're revising work and going through work and like i've been doing work for so long that i usually like a, like i don't sh i don't show everybody the whole process because like when say if i'm design okay say if i'm designing like a series of records like a, like a bunch of and I need to say I need to figure out where the, a logo is going to land here or here I don't show the client every step why I made the decision to put it here versus here yeah they might ask the question and you know or like you know have you can you try it over here be like I actually have I've tried everything <laughs> you know so I've tried every you know like this is where I'm at in the process so as a as an art director I've gone through that editing process already. So to me, that gets a little, it doesn't get tiresome because I, I communicate with clients all day, but sometimes that can kind of like doing that over and over again. Some clients are like, are easy going and you know, you work well with them. Other times it's just like kind of punishing because you're like, Hey, I've tried everything. Yeah. And now you, you want, you know, 40 new edits that's fine but I, you know i don't only the the budget is only five hundred dollars for this record and i'm you know i'm already like two weeks into work so i'm making like you know 80 cents an hour or something like i can't like that's also another thing too is like the economics of punk art right yeah. a lot of people don't talk about that sort of thing it's like i'll revise all day if some you know which is fine but like i also like technically work three jobs so like I can't I can't bill for that, you know, because I know that most records I work on, you know, like have a fixed, you know, a, a, like a fixed amount that, you know, a, a band or, or a record label can spend. And so I don't want to waste their money and I don't want to waste their time or my time. So like I try to be as efficient as possible. So there's like a lot of there's a lot of like uh, management things that go into client work where with converge i'm much more loose you know if you ask like myself or kurt how much time we spend on converge related things you know like our we don't bill our band like we would a client you know because like i would be hitting my band with an uh, invoice every two seconds for or something and i don't do that you know it's just like it's what it's part of doing it yourself we're doing it ourselves you know um that's just sort of double-edged sword of doing it yourself you know you just kind of like sometimes you you, you spend a lot of emotional and physical time building things um, for 
I don't know what the payoff is. It's purely psychological at that point, and just <laughs> making sure that you do the best version of something that you can. Yeah. Because um, I, I just don't like to cut corners, you know? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And and I was kind of asking that on behalf of me in a way, just because. Yeah, for so, sure. No, it's cool. Yeah. It's it's hard. It's a hard thing, you know, like, because sometimes like you'll get really attached to a, a like a client job and you're really excited about it and a client will deflate you. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, I'm just not into this. And you're like, that's cool. You know, like it, it happens, you know, um, I would much rather like, I would much rather work, like do something like that and then choose to like, choose to collectively like part ways and like, and hold on to those ideas for something else in the future. than um, you know, give something, some, give, give work to somebody where they would be unhappy with it or something like that. Um, but with that said, like, I, I don't like have work kicking around, you know, like most of my projects now are usually like project derived. So it's like, um, I don't, I don't have time to make, and it's not because I'm, you know, super important or, or fucking whatever. It's just that like, I physically don't have the, the amount of time it takes me to make stuff. I don't have the free time to just like make a bunch of stuff to just kind of like hang out. So if a client comes say, Hey, do you have some work that looks like this? But like, I can make it, but I'm not, I don't, I don't have it sitting around, in a, you know, in a rack or a folder or something like that. Yeah. Um, so that can be challenging too, you know, that, that aspect of things, because everything is basically has, has to be made in some capacity. Yeah, definitely. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for another great conversation. Uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, on tour with uh, Meshuga this winter. Uh, is there just a, uh, Anything else that you would like to promote uh, for Converge with the release of Blood Moon Part One or any other project that you're involved um, with? I mean, right now that's that's our the Conver primary Converge focus. You know, um, we we're we're still very much a four piece band as well. You know, so we look at Blood Moon as just an extension of what we are. So there's there's Converge Blood Moon and there's Core Converge. Like the Mashuga tour, for example, would have been just like Core Converge doing our thing. Um, we're trying to work out some some uh, blood moon things live as well and just trying to get that to fit in everybody's schedule but again covid challenges are pretty significant right now you know it's not it's logistically it's much harder to get a tour together or shows together not not for us per se but for venues yeah so um a lot of a lot of tours that were postponed or all like are like due to COVID are still like in this queue trying to get into venues. Yeah. So like the, if you talk to any venue, like venue or promoter, they'll be like, yeah, you know, you can, you might be able to have that date, but there's five other people in front of you that are trying to get that date as well. If they, if they back out, you can have that date. Yeah. Like that's the kind of stuff that we're dealing with right now. I was at like the, across the board. Yeah. I was at the venue that you're supposed to play in, in New York city, uh, this past Saturday and they practically gave mm -hmm. you a cavity search on the way in there with everything happening. So, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's no joke, you know? Um, and that's a, that's a whole logistical thing too. You know, audiences either are fine with that or they're not, you know, like I know that like we're supposed to go play, you know, if all goes well, we're playing in, in Los Angeles in a couple of weeks and we don't know like how, how much, the um the the vaccine mandate there has affected the audience but i know i know there's a lot of punk rock folks that that don't do well with being told what to do you yeah. know um and that's you know it, that's that's a problem you know so like we're struggling with that stuff too you know people are sending us you know angry emails saying like you know how dare is it how dare a venue tell me what to do with my body it's like oh, then don't go yeah you know it's not you know it's this is a public health situation this is not like we're not there's no forcing of agendas here we're just all trying to trying to get by and trying to get back to like a good baseline to to exist again so, yeah well we'll get through it we'll get through it because if there's one thing punk rock yeah. always does it's persevere but uh thank you so much everybody jacob bannon of converge be sure to check out blood moon part one we'll see you next time on heavy new york